the midterm elections are a little more than a week away. Voters will decide which party controls Congress. The latest CBS News poll show Republicans are likely to take control of the House of Representatives, while the Senate is projected to be a 50-50 split, with Democrats holding the tie-breaking vote of Vice President Kamala Harris. The fastest-growing group of voters could play a key role in battleground states, Asian Americans. Nancy Chen is here with more on that. Good morning, Nancy. Hey, good morning to you, Michelle. That's right. Asian Americans are increasing in numbers, and so is their power on Election Day. In 2020, voter participation increased exponentially in battleground states like Georgia and Nevada, as well as others like Texas and California. And that makes this year one to watch. I'm with Jay Chen for Congress. With control of Congress up for grabs, Orange County, California is home to one of the closest races in the country. So let's go win this. My accent is broken, but my heart is full. But the heated campaign between Democrat Jay Chen and incumbent Republican Michelle Steele in a district that's nearly 30 percent Asian American also showcases the growing political power of this rapidly changing community. This seat was drawn to be an Asian plurality seat. It was designed specifically so that Asian American voters would have a very strong voice. While far from a monolith, Asian Americans are the fastest growing racial group in the U.S., with more than 13 million eligible to vote this November. Asian American voters could make a huge difference this election. You know, that's what we're most excited about. Nadia Belkin heads the newly formed Asian American Power Network, an alliance of organizations advocating for progressive issues. She says Asian Americans could be the margin of victory in key battleground states, which is why the coalition collectively launched a $10 million campaign to mobilize voters. We have voters that are hungry to participate in the process. Sure. It's about making sure that we are reaching out and engaging them in ways that resonate with them. Belkin says attempts to galvanize voters are happening on the grassroots level, but campaigns should do more. Some Democratic organizers agree. We're not saying that Asian Americans have to be the top. No, we just want to say that we want to be included. But in states like Texas and Georgia, where there are large Asian American populations, outreach is growing and candidates are finding success. This upcoming election is an opportunity to organize AAPI communities in Texas. In 2020, Asian American voters in Georgia mobilized in unprecedented numbers, doubling their turnout and helping Democrats flip control of the U.S. Senate. We are a party for every American. In the lead up to this year's midterms, the Republican National Committee opened Asian American community outreach centers in California, Washington State, Nevada, Georgia, and Texas. We're looking at um, these areas where there are a lot of Asian American voters, different Asian American communities, and this investment is a considerable one. Harmeet Dillon is a member of the Republican National Committee and coordinates grassroots outreach. I think what's really important is that we start these efforts and continue them year round. While Asian Americans have historically trended Democratic, Republicans now see an opportunity to make inroads. What does this all say about the Asian American community? There is a lot of, of beauty and it's time, I think, for people to start asking questions and be curious about our diversity, be curious about the languages that we speak and the cultures that we carry with us. It's about creating a multiracial democracy. We should mention that Congresswoman Steele declined our request for an interview and that Harmeet Dillon, who we featured in our story there, is representing President Trump in the January 6th trial. Uh, both Democratic and Republican operatives, they stress the need for community outreach centers that are open even when there is not an election taking place to bring in new voters for the future. A lot of this is just uh, making it more accessible, but also making it more relatable. The, the want to participate is there. It's just about seeing somebody who recognizes your background. No matter what party you're talking about, if you're not out there in the field talking right. to people, uh, I mean, that's the difference, whether it's election season or not. Yeah. Nancy, thank you very much. Thank you.